Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin and welcome back for another video. Today I'm doing something a little bit different and that is setting up a page in my journal dedicated to my Spotify 2020 wrapped. Each year Spotify puts together a little compilation of information regarding your Spotify preferences for the year into this fun little video which you can see that I've got on the side which just gives you information about things like how many artists you listen to, what your favourite genres were, etc. The inspiration for this page in particular though came from Angel May's post over on Bullet Journal Junkies. Although mine does end up looking a fair bit different to hers, I thought that the layout she had was really cool and I in particular liked the way she did her top genres section, so that part does certainly look similar. I also liked the way that she used the jelly roll pins on top of the blackout pages. As you guys know, I love my contrast, so I figured to do something similar but using my gel pens, which are the Uniball Signo and Gelic color ones. Plus doing this one on the blackout paper meant that I could use just one more of those spare pages that I have. In terms of the 2020 wrapped video that we have here, it was pretty interesting seeing the pieces of information that Spotify pulled out for me. In particular related to my top song for the year, which I actually only started listening to in October. I'm not sad about it, I just thought it was interesting. I think the best part about Wrapped though is that you can save the playlist they make for you which has all of your top listened songs from the year. It's just kind of nice to be able to, in future years, go back and listen to what you were listening to in the current year. So for instance, I have one for 2017, 18, 19 and 20. In terms of the questions that were left on last week's video, our first one comes from ITSH Productions who asked, your thoughts, short scenario, my eight-year-old niece plays Among Us. Not only is she on live with other players in their chats, but her three-year-old brother talks about himself as if he were a player going to be killed. Secondly, also your thoughts, I've been following you since your thumbnails looked like presentation slides. Yeah, it took me a while to make proper thumbnails for my videos. Previously, I just used the title card thing that came with my editing software. But hey, small improvements add up to big progress. In terms of your niece playing Among Us, I don't see anything inherently wrong with that, provided she's been well versed in, you know, staying safe online and all of that kind of stuff. The game itself doesn't have a voice chat or a video chat option, so she can't be exposed to anything like that. And in the settings there is also a filter to avoid bad language. As I'm not a parent myself and I don't really deal with children in that age range, can't really say a lot more than that though. Our next question came from Jessica who asked, not a bullet journal question, but I'm an education student and I was wondering if you could touch on how the pandemic has impacted you as a teacher. So here in New Zealand, we went into lockdown on the 25th of March, I believe it was. And I believe we were back in school on the 29th of April. So in between then we had two weeks of school holidays and the rest of that was remote learning or virtual learning. I didn't really mind teaching virtually, but I certainly do prefer being in a classroom. I think the biggest thing that impacted me as a teacher though would have kind of been like, it's almost like a feeling of jet lag. So it wasn't so much the lockdown, but I think it was like the flow on effects from that. So like getting used to virtual teaching, which took a lot of time and energy, and then coming back to school and being just a bit more tired than you usually would. And then at the end of the year, they changed the dates for the exams, which meant we had seniors for longer, but still having them in the classroom on top of all of the other stuff we'd normally do in term four, like report writing, preparing for the next year, that kind of stuff. And then, for my school in particular, we also had the educational review office visit and all of the things you have to do for that. And then piling on top of that, we had to prepare things for the IBO. It's kind of hard to talk about because I know that where I'm based and for my school in particular, we have a lot of privilege. You know, my students all have laptops, so virtual teaching was fairly easy because of that. My students got to come back to school relatively quickly compared to other places in the world. I think one thing that was probably hard to be mindful of was, you know, not everybody only has family in New Zealand. So although all my students could come to school, they might have friends or family members in other part of the world that they're worried about. So just having to be a little bit more mindful about the fact that the world does extend beyond New Zealand and beyond the experiences of New Zealand. Yeah. 
Angela asked, are you thinking of going back to weekly spreads in 2021? Are you going to transfer your new written method to your new 2021 bullet journal? So at this stage, my general plan is to, instead of doing like formal weekly spreads, is instead have a weekly dashboard style thing and then have the dailies that I'm using in my LT 1917. So kind of like a happy medium between both. Because I'm not the type to really use a monthly log, something in particular that I missed from the weekly spreads was having kind of an outline of all of my events. So I think that having weekly dashboards will help with that. Our next question came from I am Hydra, who asked, what is your favorite holiday tradition? Mine would probably have to be chocolate breakfast. That's something that we always do on Christmas. Previously, it was just eating the kind of like chocolate snacks that you got in your stocking. But more recently, that's turned into making chocolate pancakes. Jaron Jimison, please let me know if I've said that wrong. Their question was, this year I struggled creatively with my bullet journal. I don't know if it had anything to do with the pandemic or being stressed out. How do you stay inspired with your spreads, even when it seems that everything around is falling apart? That is a great question. I will say first that I do have a previous video I've done, which is all about keeping up with your bullet journal and some of the things you can try and do to make sure you're being a bit more consistent and actually getting into it. Some of the points I talk about in that video are things like keeping your spreads a little more simple if you're finding that it's just too overwhelming to come in and actually fill them out. Also trying a layout or a spread that's new to you, just because it can keep you a little bit more excited to get into it. On a similar note, trying things like novel trackers. For instance, one month I decided to do a Coke Zero tracker to see how many cans of Coke Zero I was consuming in a day. Not good statistics on that one. If it was more the creativity side that you were struggling with, maybe feeling a little uncreative, what I find can help is actually just going and finding a picture of a spread online that I really like and then copying or mimicking it in my own journal. With full credits, of course. If you'd rather avoid directly copying someone else though, you can just use the pictures of other people's bullet journal to inspire designs for yourself. Which is essentially what I did for this layout here. So seeing that post on bullet journal junkies and then recreating my own version of it in my bullet journal. Of course, this isn't a layout that I really need to feel inspired to come back and check in with. It's kind of a make it and leave it kind of spread. But things like logs and trackers where you do have to come in a little bit more regularly and write things in, check things off. Trying a new design can sometimes make you feel a bit more inspired to get into it. Also, remember the power of out of sight, out of mind. I'm always a lot more likely to actually get into my journal and fill things in if one, it's not a struggle to do that, and thus two, my bullet journal and my journaling supplies are readily available and in my line of sight. Just a couple of ideas though, but I do recommend going and checking out that video that I mentioned before about keeping up with your journal. Our next question came from Emmy who asked, do you actually sit down and do monthly slash quarterly reflections like you mentioned in the notion section? I find it really hard to know what to reflect on when I try to do things like this, and I'm wondering if you have a strategy. At the moment I don't, but that's only because I haven't actually gone through the prompt list and made sure that everything on there is actually suited for me as an individual. Ideally what I want to do before the end of the year is go through that, make sure that all of the items that are on there would actually be beneficial, and then add in any of the other ones that I think will help me as well. Ideally what I want those monthly reflections to do is help me kind of realign with my goals, make sure that I've reflected on the progress that I've made, and kind of give me that fresh start feeling, like a mini version of what you get at New Year. You know, when we're all really excited about getting into our New Year's resolutions and New Year, New Me and all of that kind of stuff. I want like a smaller version of that feeling at the start of every month. My biggest recommendation, if this is something that you want to implement, is start by brainstorming all the things you think would be valuable in your kind of monthly quarterly reflection. So for instance, does it contain things like tidying up your physical and digital spaces, reviewing your budgeting and finances, jotting down your progress on each of your goals, etc. Write yourself a simplified and sequenced version of those things and then actually schedule a time at the end of each month to do that. You know that whole idea of failing to plan is planning to fail? A lot of the time what happens is if we don't set aside time to do certain things, 
those things don't get done. Which is, funnily enough, also a main reason why I have not done these yet. That is my intention for 2021 though. But like I said, have to write my own prompt list first. As always, thank you to everyone who left a question on last week's video. If anybody has any questions they want answered in next week's video, please do leave them in the comments below. Alrighty team, so as you can see we have some general stats, my top songs, top genres, and top artists. Obviously I listen to a lot of pop, and some alternative metal. As I asked before, I would love to know what's on your top songs, top genres, top artists from Spotify this year. But otherwise, thank you for watching team. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanted to see more from me, feel free to go check out one of my other videos. Until next time, bye!